Ryan Davis. Rich Keith. It's the Dort Podcast. Ryan Davis. It's the Dort Podcast. Hashtag. It's the Hashtag Dort Podcast. Shut up. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Hashtag Dork. My name is Rich Keefe, joined as always by Davey Eyeballs. He is Rick Rude Von Dick, dude. All hail the king of ginger ale. It's Ryan Davey. Davey, how are you? Having a blast. Having a yeah. blast. How are you? A nuclear uh, blast. Oh, shit. I just thought yeah. of that on the spot. Really smart. Savvy. Really smart. I like that. Yeah. I like that quite a bit. Yeah, no, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing good. Middle of April, you know. Can't complain. Socks yeah. are sucking right on, right on track. Sure. Just oh, as unreal. expected, as, as expected. expected. But the uh, big NFL draft show coming up. But that's next, neither here nor there. Let's next week, on. right? Yeah, week from Thursday. Yeah, that's gonna be, good. gonna be good stuff. Who are you pulling for? Mm, you know what? I still want Marvin Harrison, the fucking wide receiver. You know me. Getting on the three. Were you gonna throw it to him? You get no one else. I would like to. I take an opportunity. <laughs> yeah. No, I think. Uh, well, no, Drake May would be this probably the smart yeah. pick. Other than right. yeah. I'd be good with that. Um, but right, this is we got ourselves a nice little week. So uh we did Kirby Enthusiasm season 12, and then another show that went with a uh, little bit of a different they went with just here's every episode all at once, just boom. And then so for people like us, it's like, all right, well, how soon do you do an episode? But we both sat down, watched it, and ripped through it. And I bet a lot of you guys did as well. If you didn't, we will do a lot of spoiler free here as well. If you haven't had a chance to finish it yet, but only eight episodes. So we will, uh, I, I figure a lot of people probably have watched it, but right before we get to sure. the topic du jour, let's do this. Let's do this first. It's time for Davey's video game minute. Even if it takes more than a minute. That's right. The topic du jour is based off of a video game series, one that I have very little experience with, some, but little. You have much, much, much more experience with. So why don't you take us through the best you can, the Fallout video game franchise. So the Fallout video game franchise was launched on October 10th, 1997, which is a significant date for the show, which we will get to in spoilers, big market tease. Um, but it kind of followed the path. Actually, if you think about it, it can, it followed the exact path of like Grand Theft Auto, where the first two were good, but then the third installation, you were like, oh, that's when it really became Fallout. So same like with Grand Theft Auto. So I remember playing the first, definitely the first Fallout games, never finished the second. And it was kind of like a Diablo-esque, like dungeon crawler, like top down. Yeah. game oh, yeah, the yeah. first two um yep. very much a role-playing game we're very very good and then fallout 3 came out in 2008 and it blew up the franchise uh meaning in a good way like so this became uh bethesda took the games over they became they the first two games are only on pc and mac these came to consoles it was first person they introduced the vats system um which if you haven't played these games so think of like if you're in a first person shooter and you hit a button and you it, there's a display of every like body part of your target and you can pick based on percentages like where to shoot so you can strategically like hit people in the arm or hit them in the head yeah. um and it was a really cool mechanic um that they still have to this day um and just storytelling games unbelievable unbelievable storytelling um so if you have played those games, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't played those games yet, you can get, like, if you have a PlayStation Plus or Xbox subscription, you can probably get most of these games for free at this yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Um, and they are worth hundreds of hours of entertainment. They're so good. How many are there? There's so a... there are, it depends. So, like, there in terms of, like, Fallout main games, like, Fallout, like sequ direct sequels, there's four right now. Five is in development, but mm -hmm. then you have like um, uh, Fallout Shelter, which I know like it's like a it's like a building game. It's not it's not actually like a Fallout game or whatever. Yeah, it looks kind of um, like a cartoon, right? It's like yeah. the way it's animated. Yeah, yeah. Then you have um, they had basically add-ons to like Fallout Three. The okay. biggest one being Fallout New Vegas, which then became like a standalone thing. There was so much content, they kind of made it like its own standalone thing. Okay. Um, and then 
Fallout 76 was after Fallout 4, but it was like an online thing. Oh. So it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a story. There are okay. story components to it, but it was more like an online platform. Oh, okay. Philadelphia. So the cities that they've done. So um, I think Fallout and Fallout 2 are like, sh they talk about uh, Shady Sands. They talk mm -hmm. a lot about Shady Sands. And then 3 takes place in Washington, D.C., and Fallout 4 takes place in Boston, which is really cool because one, yeah, uh, Diamond City is actually a recreation of Fenway Park. And it's one of two games. When I lived in Charlestown, I could actually find my house in Charlestown. No shit. The other one being uh, Assassin's Creed 3 in Bunker Hill. Like the house I lived in with my wife was actually in that game. Yeah, did Fallout 4 have like the T? I want to feel like I was saw like the red line. I was like, I went to the red line or the green line or one of those. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah and it was actually a pretty good, uh, it was compact. Obviously, everything was really close together, but it was actually, you start the game in like Concord, Mass. Okay. And then move up into Boston. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, no, yeah. I definitely played four. I think I might have played three, but not when it first came out. It was probably after the fact when everybody was like, yeah. this game's insane. And then I was like, all right, so I went back. But that was probably, would that have been for like the Xbox 360? Uh, 360 was, three? yeah, three. Okay. Fall three was definitely 360. Yeah, and then uh, so, four yeah. has been around and they've like yeah, updated it as they go. Yeah. Are they making new, are they going to make any new ones, you think? It's TB. It's so Fallout Five is in the works. So, okay. so we're told. So, right. um, but I'm looking forward to seeing what they do, given the show and given everything that's happened in yeah. the games, where they're going to go with it next. What's your favorite of all? Of them? I I think four four is my favorite because it's Boston. But like mm -hmm. I I spent the most time and had the most fun playing New Vegas, which was okay. again it was an add on, but then became a standalone. Mm -hmm. Um, so it takes place um out west mm -hmm. so you start in like california with the new california republic which you see in the show they have like new california republic flags um and wind up in vegas so it's uh okay it's awesome mm. for sure and there's so much that the show can do there's so much there i'm excited yeah. to talk about all that stuff too i also yeah. i love the the fucking little uh logo the little the little guy with the thumbs up yeah pretty good stuff it was actually it was actually cool to see where that came from it was amazing. The show yeah. I thought did an amazing job with that. So anything else, uh, video game uh, that you want to hit on? Or are we good? Uh, definitely play them. If you haven't played them yet. And again, I started playing them again now. I'm playing Fallout 4 now just to see all of the Easter eggs and things that you see in the show that are actually in these games. I was and thinking the same thing. A ton. The game made me want to go back and play. big, Or the show made me want to go back and play the games big time. Yeah, I agree. Y'all ready for biz? Topic du jour time now, Ryan. Although that was a nice appetizer for the topic du jour. That wasn't it? No, this is the full dish. The main course. Fallout, the Amazon Prime TV series. Eight episodes all came out at once like we were just uh, talking about. Most of them were an hour. There was a couple in the middle there. There were about 45 minutes. So I would say a good seven hours worth of content there if you add it all up. And uh, let's begin as we do with all of our movie and TV reviews, spoiler free. Ryan, did you like it? I absolutely did. Did you like it? Dude, I loved it. I loved it. And I was floored because I saw there's only one TV critic I ever even mentioned. It's the only one I follow on Twitter. It's Alan Sepinwall from the Rolling Stone. Mm -hmm. He does a good job. I usually feel like he and I have similar tastes, right? Like he likes the leftovers he liked better call Saul. like he likes all these like type of show like the, the obvious ones and maybe some of the not so obvious ones and he watches just about everything he didn't like the show i was floored now i'd already seen it first and i don't really give a shit like i'm not gonna be like oh i definitely don't but i was just surprised that he didn't i saw a couple of other weird reviews online too and i'm like people don't like fallout fallout was insane i loved it i thought the i thought the preview looked good and we talked about the preview months ago I'm like, oh shit, this is going to be something worth watching. Then we did our TV ep uh, TV shows of 2024 episode, and this was one of the ones that we had circled for sure. And I get like right away sucked in. Episode one, I was in, and then I just like couldn't wait to watch the rest of it, and then was bummed that it was over. So I lo I love the show. It's great. Yeah. I'm looking at his thing right now, and it's like he was disappointed, yeah, kind of like, but like disapp disappointed in what? Like that's what I don't like. What did you expect? Like, I don't did know, he mentioned he had, in his article he played the games? 
he didn't say anything about the games. I don't think he did. Maybe he did. He was talking about like he had a chance to interview Walton Goggins, like la- like leading up to it too. And he's like, I like him, but like I don't like the show. I'm like, oh, and sp- not a spoiler, but he was fucking excellent. Well, I was gonna say the cast, awesome, awesome. Mm-hmm. So there's basically like three leads in the show, and then there's a bunch of other characters that are in it a lot. And I thought it was pretty amazing. So Walton Goggins is incredible. He's mm-hmm. so good. The the girl Ella Purnell who was Jackie in Yellow Jackets. Right. And and it took me like three episodes to figure out where I knew her from. Yeah, because she, of course, was uh, a lot in season one and then just very little in season two. (laughs) One of the reasons why season one is better than season two. A little less of her in season two. There's a little bit less. There is. No, she's in there, though. Well, because of what happens. There's less of her. Forget it. (laughs) <laughs> it's a I, joke it's a joke yeah. i know i know what you're saying <laughs> but um i she's terrific like she she is a great mm-hmm. like lead character um and then but also do you notice some of like the side characters they had uh a guy from lost they had a guy from yeah. severance which to me i thought was pretty fitting because severance and lost both have like a certain way about them like they have a certain feeling when you're watching those shows and I think Fallout was kind of going for some of that as well. And I'm so the kid who played Maximus, who's the Brotherhood of Steel knight. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I saw anything. I, I I've never seen him in anything. He, I'm just looking at this now. He has not been in much. Oh, he was in four episodes of the Night of, which we watched. That HBO. Oh yeah, show. yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't really remember him. Yeah, he's not in a whole lot. But good for him. This was kind of like a cool role for him. It was a really cool role. I mean, he was kind of the weak link of the three, but like he wasn't bad. Like he was no, he was still pretty good. But yeah, I thought the cast was was pretty awesome. Also, something that I know you would appreciate. How good was the soundtrack? I mean, again, so this is what the um the games do a great job of, and they've expanded upon us like this whole like Nat King Cole like 40s, 50s music that like in the game, like you can turn on your Pip Boy and like pick radio stations and stuff and they have some unbelievable songs yeah um just like i remember we were joking about it like uh, every time i would play fallout my uh, my wife would come in and she'd be like i just what are you playing and i would explain what it is and she's like you're just kind of like walking around a lot like i never really see you do anything and so as i'm walking around this whole huge map like i'm just listening to these tunes (laughs) cranking tunes like looking for loot and like raiding (laughs) houses or whatever it's great Pretty much. Yeah, no, that's yeah. exactly what I'm doing. I thought the show looked really good, too. That's another we don't talk about it all the time, but just especially when you're taking something from like a video game or taking something from a comic book to like the vaults all look pretty cool. Like yeah. all the all the outfits that they wore, then like the Brotherhood people and like the um what's the fucking big machine thing called? The big suit, the tech suit. Oh, the power armor, yeah. Power armor, like all that stuff, yeah. like look good. Like it looked it looked really uh look pretty sweet. Um the story, now you I guess you could go a few different ways because there has been so there's so much content in these video games, right? Yeah, so it's so, not like there wasn't like an obvious jumping off point, I guess. Well, I guess the jump the where it's well no, that's not like, true. No, yeah. no, like you didn't know who like to to base the show around. Obviously, there's like a there's like a main jumping off point, but like you didn't know where to go. And I thought they they chose kind of a, a great handful of characters to follow in all of this yeah and it's kind of like so it's not a direct storyline from the games but it it runs parallel to like two of the games okay um which is really cool because they there's a lot of like mentions of things um one the very last shot and there's some other things that are mentioned throughout the series that allude to things that happen in the game which was really which was really cool and if you if it's a fine line if you didn't know it's just like okay cool like they mentioned this or whatever and then um like they said the new california republic like that's from new vegas yeah 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 um and all that that whole storyline so they make mention of things and there's like little all the products that you see are actual in-game products so like a braxo cleaner and like cram like the stuff you eat and like the blamco mac and cheese like those are all in the game yeah that's sick it's pretty awesome um i thought a surprising amount of comedy too like really well done without being 
like I think they had a pretty high percentage. Like there's some shows that like go for a ton of jokes, don't really land them. There are other ones that, especially when you have some intense stuff going on, it feels like it's disjointed. I thought they kind of nailed it. Like there was like a good amount of comedy, but then when they needed to get serious, like you had no problem getting serious. No, and they, um again, there are some. I'm thinking of a scene like re, like right away. It, it's just so ridiculous. Like the idea of this is like so over the top, and the idea that like, what if the world stopped? Like this Ozzy and Harriet like 40s 50s ideal and they never grew out of that and like people like you know you know what i mean like that would that was like the yeah. nuclear family and like all that stuff like people yeah. never yeah. got past that and it was just that forever um so it's ridiculous in like a world that's so brutal yeah that they kind of have to make a joke out of it sometimes i was thinking of the the scene with um fred armison oh it's so he's like the radio dj yeah 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 and he's got like all these like booby traps and dead bodies around like this little radio station yeah like that's ridiculous but it's no, it's so the, funny some of the cameos were were great uh yeah. added some of the comedy the action was good too like when there were times for shootouts or when there was times for you know getting kind of bloody like there was some sick action too so well, they went for it there was some yeah. oh with the some good uh head crushing yep oh yeah yep uh, I would say this is a must watch and then some, uh, an easy watch, a must watch for sure. Uh, dork score before we get to all the spoiler stuff. I have a whole bunch of, I wrote down a lot of stuff here. So a lot of stuff. What do you, um, you get for a dork score? I'm going to give it a five and a half. I like where this is going. I was thinking, I was thinking long and hard about this. I'm going six at a boy. I don't know what I didn't like about it. There's nothing I can really. Ooh. I'm shocked that if people didn't like it to me, it had everything. And even some of the uh, questions that we'll get into, mm -hmm. like, I don't need every single thing answered for me. Like I just, you know, I, I thought it was set up so well. I thought there were enough payoffs. Like we're, we're just talking about the, the character. Anytime you have great lead characters, I can, I, I can forgive a lot of things too, but I don't even know if there was much that I need to forgive. Like I thought it was such a well set up, season of television i loved i loved it loved it loved it dude loved it all right let's get to uh spoilers let us know what you guys thought uh what your dork score is for fallout spoilers 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 here come the spoilers all right this show of course is going to provide plenty of what the fuck moments right you're gonna yes. you're gonna get a few of those for sure um and like we said kind of all based around the three main characters coop uh walton goggins and I, the show also does a nice job with the uh flashbacks and flash forwards or whatever so the 2077 was the year in which there was this great war uh nuclear exchange blah 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 then it also jumps ahead to 2296 mm -hmm. it was like 200 years roughly 200 years ahead of time but they kind of go back and forth a little bit between the two as i think all good shows kind of do right <laughs> i was like looking back yeah. at it, like, that's one of my favorite things about yellow jackets is like sort of the so, ping pong and i didn't want to spoil this and before so you got to think of it in like two so it's like 1961 2077 and then 2296 so there's like three distinct mm. time frames that you're kind of dealing with and i think um so the initial so with like coop like so like i'm trying to think because like i'm getting confused now because that happens so like the original fault like it's something happens in like the i think it's 61 where like one of the astronauts comes back blows up on re-entry there's like a there's a whole thing and then like there's a nuclear war with um russia mm -hmm. and the, so they the initial bomb is russia mm -hmm. and then later you get so with like Maximus and like all that's like his when he lived in like Shady Sands and like they blow that up. That happens later, mm -hmm. and oh, then yeah. you and then the actual main thing in the show takes place is like twenty two ninety six or something. Yeah, that's what they. Like that's said. when the actual show takes place. Yeah, so and that's it's, it's where been like hundreds of years. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. But like then you get introduced like these ghoul characters because you're trying to figure right. out all right. So how does Walton Goggins, who was a famous actor. And then mm -hmm. as the series goes on, you find out that he gets talked into doing these commercials for this, which is like pretty crazy. Not a lot of people are on board with this, obviously, right. as they should not have been. And uh, but then you're like, all right, well, so if that was him in 2077, how is he 
walking around as a as a ghoul like you you, you still have some questions about these ghouls like is it just yeah. anybody who dies or no 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 yeah. so there's there's a way in which and so there's well there's two types of ghouls in the game there's like standard ghouls who you can talk to and they're like there's one that's a companion that's awesome like one mm -hmm. you can like have next to you and he's a sniper so he like hides behind you and just like picks people off like as you're going through towns perfect which is great um but there's also like feral ghouls so like once they let themselves go too far and there's I'm not sure if it's like there's a drug in the game. They call them chems, but there's like different yeah. chems. And you know that that doctor who was like carrying around like his potions, like those yeah. happen. And so like you can make potions like in the game that do different things. Um, and so ghouls can kind of maintain a little as long as they get whatever drugs they need. Yes. Which you yeah. saw him like taking like the inhaler and like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They yeah. Go, they can go feral. Yeah, and that's why he's a binary. He's he got he has a lot of Cad Bane to him too. Yeah, and like, and in reality, they're dead. Like they're zombies. They're, right. So they're they don't they're not alive. So they live right. forever in a sense. And yeah. so you right like when you're first introduced to him, you know something's up because he's clearly got hired to do this birthday party, and like the people are happy to see him, but then some of the dads are kind of like making fun of him, and so it's sort of, sort of this weird thing. But then also you explain the fucking thumbs up thing. Which is so Which cool. Is, it's so, it's, yeah. Isn't that a cool thing? So the so the so the thumbs up is he's like, you hold it out, and this is all during the time of like a, a atomic bomb. So he's like, you hold it out there, and if the cloud is smaller than your thumb, you run. And if the cloud's bigger, don't bother. Yeah. I'm like, that's pretty sick. And, she, and then the girl, his daughter says, My thumb or your thumb. <laughs> right. Because she's like holding it. Like, yeah, and that's she why like it. yeah, yeah. She sees it first, and then he gets the hell out of there. But because the the fallout like cartoon character logo is such like an innocent looking kid with a big smile on his face and the thumbs up and then to know like what it's really all about is is awesome and by the way so they uh okay never mind so i was like i i was looking to see the origin of the actual thumbs up yeah and i guess the it was in the army but it was like navy pilots where they would like point their thumb up when they're like i'm ready to go up hmm so like when they were telling us like in the cockpit, but it would have been really cool if that was the actual origin of the actual. It is. Up. Well, hey, I'll take it for Fallout. Like that's a, that's a good idea. Yeah. So you also get when you get introduced to Lucy. So she's in Vault Thirty Three, and there are there are three connecting vaults here. You're going to learn about more vaults, but they're all excited because they're she is going to get married to somebody from another vault, right? She's right. like too much time doing cousin stuff. Like you got to get on and you got to because Which, one day. <laughs> it was just so funny yeah cousin yeah stuff. it was so funny because like she says that like so cavalier yeah it's like we're cut like we can fool around and whatever we're cousins that's fine but like if i want to start a family like we can't so good <laughs> like, yeah which was hilarious and what was that guy's name it was uh like her cousin oh yeah he um, was good too i forget his name he was uh, like the gatekeeper yeah but yeah, yeah what the hell was, uh chet yes chet his name was chet uh, so then, so you you immediately know something's kind of up with this Vault Thirty Two because they come in, they're all looking kind of off. They're like looking at him. They're like, "What the fuck's going on?" She gets married, goes back to her vault or her room. They have sex, and then she's like, "Something's up." So then, like, he's going after her, the whole thing, and then it's like they're raiders. Turns out they're raiders, mm -hmm. and they're trying to uh, take over the vault, but. Uh, that whole thing was was pretty crazy because he knew something was up and i'm like is this gonna be something that kind of lingers like no it doesn't linger like this is this is kind of figured out in episode one but it was also kind of cool to see as the show played out like because they talk about vaults 31 32 33 and how why those are the only three interconnected vaults mm. and you come to find out the story behind that which was kind of cool too so yeah, um because, and then it was like so shout out to lucy's little brother norm Mm -hmm. Because he was doing a good job asking questions and kind of putting things together, but they they would always have an overseer, so they'd have one person in charge, and the person would always be from Vault Thirty One. Yeah, the overseer would come into Vault Thirty Three, and so the they thought the Raiders like wiped out Thirty Two, but then you're just learning like what the fuck is even going on down here, and then skip ahead right. to the end. Vault Thirty One just has a brain on a Roomba, just kind of going about. <laughs> But it's what's his name? It's the guy who was like the um he was like one oh, of yeah. the executives at Vault Tech. 
Yes. Who's now, and so he was super in, annoying. Yeah. Yeah. And so in Fallout 4, I don't know if you remember the beginning, like you actually get frozen and they say it's like an experimental vault. Mm. Like you're like, it's not like the other vaults. Like they're, you don't live down there. Like they freeze people until they're ready to go back. And it was like, and I love how they explained like every vault was its own basically science experiment. Yeah. Which is, yeah. And because in the games, they all run differently. Right, right. If you you what, can go into other vaults and learn about like what happened in those, which is fascinating. Yeah. So that was cool. And like there was that whole thing, like where there's that round table, and Walton Goggins is like listening in on the earpiece, mm -hmm. and they're all sitting around, all these like big, big timers, and they're talking about what they want to do. And then like the ideas that they had too were just like outrageous, which you're, I'm sure is what they were all doing. Because then when Lucy goes into Vault Four, they're all just like experimenting on themselves so they can be like animal hybrids so they could survive like on earth right or like on on the surface yes and so there's a subtle nod too i think there's one you see it on like a gurney um one of the big like villains you meet like in the wasteland are these things called super mutants yeah and they're like these big green like hulk looking guys and i think you see one getting pushed like on a That's gurney right. in, in yeah. that vault um, so I, that's one of those things that like, hopefully that's coming. Like you mm -hmm. get, to, um, and the other thing too, is like the, that skull that you saw, like uh, that the last shot with Kyle McLaughlin's like walking out and there's like with the horns. Yeah. That's a death claw. Like those things are pretty awesome too. So you yep. get to, you, we're going to see those. That's pretty good. A lot good. of great creatures. A lot of, oh yeah. A lot of creatures. Yeah. There was that one in the water that was attacking them. That was a, that was a good one. Um, so then you get, so I was going to talk about Dr. Uh, was it, remember Benjamin Linus? Ben from, Linus, right? Yeah. Ben was. Linus from Lost. He was a pretty major character in this because he, you first get introduced to him and they're doing all these stuff with the dogs and they have the, they each have like yep. a German Shepherd, they're raising a German Shepherd. And like, long story short, he injects himself in the head with like that energy shit that they, they all need. Cold fusion. Yeah. Cold fusion. So they're all going after this guy. And then, he ends up kind of escaping and then he's like telling lucy like no you just need you need to like cut my head off and take like that was a pretty fucking crazy part in the show yeah. that was that was definitely a <laughs> what the fuck so now she's walking around like she's batman in the what was it the last uh last day on earth or whatever issue it was remember that comic with like i think he had like the joker head like in last his... night on earth or whatever yeah 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 but so basically like just carrying his head while everyone's in on in on that so that was but it, was good. So, it was so funny too like throughout the series like the head gets more and more gross and they play with it like it's a beach ball like they don't it not, doesn't bother anybody like they're just no. like holding it looking at it like turning it over like it's nothing yeah that's true <laughs> yeah uh, also in episode two michael rapaport was in the suit he was a knight he titus. was, he was the real the titus yeah. yeah he was the real titus maximus was his squire and i was like fuck is he is he in this show and then no, he was he was not in the show for very long. So like, and he's such a good. fucking asshole, and they kill him immediately. Yep, a bear. Yeah, attack my bear. Yeah, radioactive bear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not fun. Uh, and then so Moldavar is like a you get introduced. You have a lot of questions about who Moldavar is. Like, what's the what's the deal? What does this lady know? She's good guy, bad guy, somewhere in between. But that was a pretty cool character. I thought a decent um payoff on that. Uh, let's see. There's that sick shootout in episode two in Philly. Yes. With, uh, I don't know if you want to call him the ghoul, if you want to call him Coop, if you want to call him Howard, if you want to call him Walton Goggins, whatever. He's <laughs> all of those. Things. Yeah. So but it's him shoot, basically shooting up Philly. And uh, was, uh, Maximus comes in and tries to save the day. And he like mm -hmm. him and they, those two go at it. But mm -hmm. it was, uh, oh, just great violence. That was great. In episode two. Yeah. Um, and also, I didn't know, I don't think we knew until like episode four if there were even other ghouls. Like, I don't know if Walton Goggins was the only ghoul, but then we meet another ghoul in episode four. Oh, it was Roger. There's everywhere. a lot of ghouls. Their fucking things are everywhere. But then, it's the real see, problem. What I, like, what I like about Lucy is on the one hand, she's like kind of a, uh, like she's like innocent. She's brought up in this vault where like everything's supposed to be great. And she's always like looking for like the best things. But they also show you a quick montage where like she can handle herself. You know, like yeah. she trains in like judo and jujitsu and like all this stuff. She's in like great shape. And then like she's not afraid of the ghoul. Like she'll talk to the ghoul. 
she fucking bit his finger off. Like so they're like rolling yeah. around. She bites his finger off, and then he grab cuts her finger off, and like she doesn't completely lose her mind. And you're like, she's tough as shit. Like, I like yeah, that. and it, yeah, and it was it was great because like you through that character you can learn like people explaining things to her like you mm -hmm. can learn as well. So that's a great kind of device for that. That's just good writing mm -hmm. that you and the character are learning together like what this world is like. And there's this great line where um. Coop says to her, she's like, like, who are like, who are you? And he's like, I'm you. You just like, yeah, you just get yeah. like, basically, like, you just and then he uh, she bites his finger off. He's like, there you are, a little killer. Yeah, like, yeah, there you are. <laughs> like, to, uh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Just the way he delivers every line is so good. Goggin. So good. Yeah. Um, And then, oh, that. so then you're like, they clearly are like, are they going to work together? They're not going to work together. And he basically brings her to that place to just trade her more of those things that he can take yeah. to keep, them, keep them going and it's at this place that they're just like harvesting organs mm -hmm. that was pretty wild and they're using the um it's codsworth in the game but i forget the name of like those droids it's like one of the uh but it's voiced by matt berry who's like an um you yeah, see snip. him he's like they get snip snip he, he's like an acting friend of goggins like from back yeah in the but he's uh oh and he was also in curb he was the guy, he, he the was British director. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but he's fantastic in what we do in the shadows, the show. Um, but snip snip, but there's like a specific type of like rope, but he's sold his voice to like that mm -hmm. company um, to use in perpetuity. Like all the robots talk like him. Yeah. And he delivers sure. lines better than anybody in the world. I'm convinced. Oh, he's really um, good. But that was a cool scene of just like, yeah, the, um, how that shit works and you get to see the feral ghouls are like when they're like she's like yes. no i want all these people set free he's like right. no you don't you don't want to open that and she does it anyway yeah. but yeah um i also like there was a scene i think it was in episode four where chet the the girl with the eye patch who just yeah. lost her husband like just like basically shows up and she's like you know we're together now and yes. so like, they're <laughs> but she's super pregnant and they're like hook it up and he goes that's one wet lady and then she just <laughs> <laughs> but it was like that she just immediately gives birth um right, so i'm trying to think all right i just looked at the timeline of all the fallout games so they yeah. have them in so fallout 76 takes place in 2102 fallout okay. 1 is 2160 so there's all these games that take place and the fallout tv show is actually after all of the games oh okay so all, all right. of the stuff in the games has already happened interesting yeah oh another good character is thaddeus the other squire that kid oh yeah he's yeah he's yeah. funny he was in like crawl show he was like he's popped he's been in a bunch of things how i'm so norm the character norm uh yeah. lucy's brother he's a little shit of a guy huh a little tiny guy just a little you put him in your pocket i bet yeah. Either that or he does a lot of scenes with Chet. Maybe Chet's seven foot two. But he makes him look really small. But unlikely, yeah. Um oh, it was actually kind of funny. There's another another thing, like as you're trying to put the clues together, when Norm asked the lady, because the lady with the pirate eye that just gave birth, yeah. she also was from Vault 31. And Norm goes, Hey, what's what's different between Vault 31 and 33? And she's like, oh, wouldn't your dad have told you? Because he was also from 31. And he's like, yeah, I don't, yeah, he didn't really. And she's like, oh, well, like our potatoes were a little bit better. And he's like, yeah, that's what he said too. And it's just like, so something stunk. And like, I like trying to figure out what the fuck was even going on with, with 31. Um, let's see. Yeah, you get a lot of, in episode six, you get a lot more flashbacks to walton goggins kind of filming that commercial and just like all the time around there that's when you get introduced you find out that snip snip was his buddy from before but then there's like his wife starts out as a very like you, you don't really think much of her character like right. oh that's just his wife and then you're like oh shit she's actually up to up to no good she's up to no good corporate greed man so it's gonna ruin us all mm -hmm. it's true we're all and he's there's a great line matt barry says we're all it's 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 products we're all products yes everything's a product so, was, uh, uh, yeah, you mentioned the Fred Armisen cameo. We also got a Chris Parnell cameo. You did one eye. It's like he, Chris Parnell. He, speaking of playing the same character all the time, he's just like the lovable, like idiot mm -hmm. in everything. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can't like they're going to sacrifice. Yeah. She finds out all this thing they're doing experiments on humans to make them 
they splice them with radio animals that could like handle radiation. Yes. So they have all these like freaks like in this vault. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then he's, you know, a cyclops. And he's like, yeah, we have all these people from the surface down here. He's like, I was born here. And she's like, you what? <laughs> she's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, also, in one of the flashbacks, when you knew something was up with Coop's wife was when, so they have their one daughter and they were like talking about like, well, if when they, if they go to the vault and then she has like a throwaway line, like, well, we're, cause he's like, well, we have money, like we can pay for it. And she's like, yeah. No, I, I gotta stay in Vault Tech because then we can then we can stay in one of the good vaults. And one of the good he, ones. He's like, What? Because he's doing these commercials just thinking they're all the same. That's what everybody would assume that they're all the exact same. Scientists living down there, though, maybe is a little bit of a red flag, but that's what, <laughs> that's what they were kind of thinking. But uh, there's a whole thing where she was like, dogs aren't allowed. And he's like, Who made that decision? And right. He's like, Where they where does it say that no dogs? She's like, like, who made that decision? And she like wouldn't answer him. Right. It's like you know who made that decision. Who made it? That was a good call. Yeah. Uh Thaddeus ends up turning into a ghoul because he steps on one of the booby traps at Fred Armisen's. But no, it wasn't because of that, because he took the stuff to fix his foot. To oh, how his foot. Was his yeah. foot? Oh uh, my god. How's he walking on that? It just it just looked like rotten meat, like after a while. It like, looked uh, it looked kind of like uh Harvey Dent from the Dark Knight when he turned yeah. into two face, like when he turned over, it was like ugh. Yeah, that foot was nasty, but then yeah, the the snake oil salesman there gave him something, but then he gets shot in the neck, and then he's fine. But he's a ghoul now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why aren't I dead? <laughs> like, what? Are they, like, I think you're a ghoul. Yeah. yeah. He's like, no. Oh. He's like, they're gonna be so pissed. They're gonna be so yeah. mad. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you get the finale where they kind of un kind of unload a whole bunch of stuff, flashbacks and present day, and basically kyle mclaughlin has been like a piece of shit guy moldavar yep. who you thought might be yeah, a piece of shit a bad guy moldavar's good good lady mm -hmm. kind of fucked up though that she left the mom alive that was the mom sitting there as like the ancient ghoul well yeah it's kind of fucked up but it's not her anymore you know so kyle mclaughlin basically has there's just been different versions of him for 200 years how does or that or like he was so basically all of the junior executives because remember that you meet him and he's actually a big fan yes and he like meets him in the offices and talks to him while he's learning all of this stuff so he knows him yes and it makes sense as to why everyone knew who lucy was they kept like you're like lucy mclean like they knew yeah, who they she was last name yeah 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 um and it was so all of those junior executives got frozen and then they unfroze them as they needed them so that's why you could see like all the people who were like overseers in 32 were actually from vault. They were vault tech people. So they oh, knew. Got it. So that's what it was. So they were all yeah. frozen. So like he hasn't had like multiple lives. Like that's his one. No, crack, but that's they, his he one. Basically on ice for like 140 years, probably whatever. Right. It was. And it. it was um anyone. Remember the two guys were running to be overseers and they didn't know that they were never going to be. You had to be like the one of the frozen people to like be an overseer yeah 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 right yeah because nor yeah right norm found out that they all came from 31 to 33 so why was that then they had that stupid line what is it like uh something like look to 31 remember they have like a corny little motto yeah. about like, when things are down like um but okay so that's interesting oh so before i forget so and so once we're on the last episode and she's like put in your code to start like the fusion the code he puts in is 10 10 9 1 0 1 0 9 7 which is the original release date of fallout ah uh, nice that's a good yeah. one so that's why it was like a little like that's nod a good thing. for that yeah and now mclaughlin's on his way to vegas now right that's new vegas so like the, when he comes up over the horizon he's like goes past like the the death claw skull that that what you see is new vegas and that's the closest one i think that the action of that game took place like five years before so okay. it's, it's still up and running. Cool. So that's where yeah. they're going. And now Lucy and Walton Goggins are kind of working together anyway. And they want to go. Because yeah. also Walton Goggins is like, where's my family? So he's looking right. for his family still. Um. So the, yeah, because his wife's got to be somewhere. And if they got the Freezy Vaults in Boston, they might be in Boston too. So. They, could, they could possibly be in Boston. Yeah. 
Well, so that's the thing because when uh, that was the other, another clue that they dropped was when they were in Vault Four, and you think they're weird, but they're actually nice. And mm-hmm. they ask Lucy, like, "Well, like, what? What's the experiment? Or like, what's the? What are they doing in Vault Thirty Three? And she's like, "Nothing." So, like, at that point, you're like, <laughs> "What the fuck?" Well, it's true because they they weren't really doing anything in Thirty Three, but it was more of a social experiment than so, it was a scientific yeah, so 31 was just like all of those like people frozen yep was 32 anything i think 32 was like everyone else who like didn't be, okay. you know, it's, it's odd because like they have like because they move people to 32 because remember 32 got they like ate each other like they fucked oh, did, each the other Ra- right. did the raiders kill them because the raiders didn't kill them right no. they were already dead yeah yeah okay. they were already dead so that's why they and they killed each other yeah, yeah, and okay. they—I think they figured it out. Okay, and that was the whole thing. Crazy. Anyway, yeah. dude, like I—I I loved it. There's a lot to pick apart. Seven, eight hours worth of television, but I absolutely loved it. Like I—I I, I can't recommend this show enough. And last, just to put the button on that. So, like, remember they had like, oh, it was like the triannual, like swap, with like the different. Yeah. So those are all like the people who come in, for that. Yeah. Are supposed to be all from 30, like 31, 32. They're supposed to be like those people who they technically have never met, but they're just like unfreezing people and introducing them into slowly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, It's crazy. But then, yeah, that that, the show has so many other ways to go because you can go into other vaults and see what they're doing in those vaults and see other people. It's always, it's also, it's fun to, and this is obviously not a coincidence, but like the three characters that we're following all have such different perspectives on this yes. whole thing like goggins character is over 200 years old the other two are younger but one only lived on the surface one only lived in a vault so they right. all coming at it from so many different ways and the brotherhood of steel is very much like yeah f- they love finding artifacts and preserving the old world like they want to bring the old world back. Great. the artifacts are like a, a toaster oven right you know? so great <laughs> yeah. yeah how good that too with that scene when she was like we can end on this when she was like uh they were sitting there in quarantine. She's like, you want to have sex? And he's like, what? He's like, you mean like use my cock? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, well, his description. Yeah. He's like, Sometimes it happens. Uh, you know, I've heard it happens, but like, you know, it can get like, kind of like get real kind of nasty and like explode or whatever. She's like, no, that's supposed to happen. He's like, what? ideally every time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys let us know what you thought of Fallout. Hit us up on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Dork Podcast. And of course, you can uh, watch these episodes live Sunday nights on YouTube. Just uh, subscribe, youtube.com slash Dork Podcast. I think personally, it's going to be an early contender for show of the year. I thought it was, a, thought it was an absolute uh, great time. Uh, up there with video game, um, what are they? Uh, adaptation, uh, like, like with Last of Us. I think it's the one of the one two punch of like video game adaptation yeah you know it's funny i'm glad you brought that up last of us i enjoyed the game a lot more than like fallout games but i gotta maybe go back and play more fallout but the shows i think are pretty similar i mean i might like this slightly more and that's not a knock at all i loved last of us so no but the last of us is very bleak this is this is at least some hope in this good point yeah yeah they're very different All right, that'll do it for us next week, I believe, is TBD. So keep an eye out on the Twitter. We will let you know what we're going to be doing next week. But until then, Rye, promise me a million times over, you'll never do another rule. Yeah, man, no, I'm not going to promise you that.